Now let's turn our attention to sexually transmitted infections, or STIs. Not enough attention is being paid to the risk of STIs because the more effective the contraceptive at preventing pregnancy, the higher your risk of getting an STI. I repeat, the more effective the contraception, the higher the risk for sexually transmitted infections. There are approximately 30 STIs. Some of them are viruses and some of them are bacteria. The most common bacterial STIs are chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis. The most common viruses are herpes simplex virus 1 and 2, human papillomavirus, and human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, which leads to AIDS. As we talk about STIs, I will pause occasionally to give you a chance to think of what your answer might be if this were a classroom setting. Generally, STIs are transmitted by sexual contact with an infected partner. So does that mean that both men and women can be infected with these STIs? Yes, although depending upon the STI, some affect women more than men and some men more than women. You may wonder if it is necessary to have sexual intercourse to transmit these diseases. The answer is no. While vaginal, anal, and oral sex do have a much higher likelihood of transmitting infection, it is still possible to transmit infection from skin-to-skin -skin contact. If bodily fluids of the infected partner gets on the skin of an uninfected partner who has a break in the skin, whether it be from a scratch or a rash or pimple, or even if the man has shaved recently, then the bacteria or virus can infect through the breaks in the skin. The pre-ejaculatory fluid is known as Cowper's fluid. Any contact of the Cowper's fluid with the vulva creates the possibility of infection, including HIV. Would you always know when you have been infected? The answer is no. Some of these STIs have almost no symptoms initially. Others have relatively minor symptoms in the beginning. Even the ones with symptoms tend to have the symptoms appear to clear up and go into remission, but unless the STI has been treated, then the infection has simply gone into hiding, a latent phase in which there are no symptoms, but the STI is multiplying. Are there medicines I can take to cure STIs? The answer is that bacterial infections can sometimes be cured with antibiotic therapy, but both partners must be treated at the same time to avoid reinfection. Antibiotic resistance from recurrent use is becoming a big medical problem. How about viruses? Can viruses be cured? No, viruses are not curable. There are no drugs or medicines which cure the virus. There are medicines, however, that can help with symptoms and can prevent the viruses from spreading. But some viruses like herpes and HIV can never be totally eliminated and require lifelong therapy. So we have some basics as to how bacteria and viruses can be transmitted and result in infection. And so now we will talk about some of the main STIs. One of the reasons that contraceptives are bad medicine is that the more effective the contraceptive is at preventing pregnancy, the more likely it is to result in an STI. The reason for that is that when the partners are more certain that there will not be a pregnancy, there is a tendency not to use the condom, and unless both partners are, as they should be, completely committed to each other in marriage and certain that neither of them have a sexually transmitted disease, then there is the risk of the other partner getting an STI. So now let's take a look at some of the STIs that can result even when using contraceptives that are effective at preventing pregnancy. Chlamydia. Chlamydia infection is one of the most common sexually transmitted infections worldwide. It is a bacterial infection caused by chlamydia trachomatis. It is estimated that one million individuals in the United States are infected with chlamydia. Chlamydia can be transmitted during vaginal, anal, or oral sex and can be passed from an infected mother to her baby during childbirth. Most women who have a chlamydia infection of the cervix, also known as cervicitis, have no symptoms and do not even know that they are infected. When men have a chlamydia infection of the urethra, urethritis, it is usually symptomatic, causing a white discharge from the penis. This chart shows the rates of chlamydia infection for men, here on the left, and for women, here on the right, 
by different age groupings, starting here with the 10 to 14 year old age group, all the way down to the 65 and older age group. These figures show the 2009 incidence of chlamydia in men and women. Age groups of men and women, both in the 15 to 24 year age group, are by far the most infected of all the age groups. Look at the two bars through this area where the green highlight is located. Notice again that the women are on the right and the men on the left. Serious problems occur when women don't realize that they are infected. Bacteria can travel up into the fallopian tubes, which can cause infertility and ectopic pregnancies. At least one third of infertility today is caused by chlamydial and or gonorrheal infections. Newborns born to infected mothers are susceptible to infections of the eye and chlamydia is a leading cause of blindness. Syphilis. Syphilis is a highly contagious disease spread primarily by sexual activity, including oral and anal sex. The disease can be passed to another person through prolonged kissing or close bodily contact. Syphilis is spread from sores and the vast majority of the sores go unrecognized. The infected partner is often unaware of the disease and unknowingly passes it on to his or her sexual partner. There are three stages of syphilis. In the primary stage, you may notice one or more sores within 10 to 90 days after exposure. The sores will go away in three to six weeks, but without treatment, it will move on to the secondary stage. The secondary stage begins at six weeks after exposure and may last one to three months. In the second stage, people experience a copper penny rash, typically on the palms of their hands. One can have sores in their mouth, vagina, or anus, and a rash on one or more areas of their body. Symptoms such as fever, swollen lymph glands, sore throat, hair loss, weight loss, and headaches can also be seen. These symptoms will go away whether or not the person receives treatment. At that point, the infection moves to the latent and then late stages of syphilis. The latent and late stages begin when all the previously described symptoms disappear. One can continue to have syphilis in their body for years without any signs or symptoms. A person may never get late stage syphilis, but when he or she does, it's very serious and would occur 10 to 30 years after their infection. In late stage syphilis, they will experience difficulty in coordinating muscle movements, paralysis, numbness, blindness, dementia, and damage to their internal organs, which can result in death. Gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is a common bacterial STI. It infects the same organs as chlamydia and has similar long-term effects. The symptoms of gonorrhea include burning when urinating, and in a man, white, yellow, or green discharge from the penis. Many people with gonorrhea don't have symptoms, and because of that, there are over 700,000 new cases each year. Gonorrhea can be transmitted through genital, anal, and oral sex, and can even infect the throat. Even if you're not having symptoms, gonorrhea can have serious consequences because if left untreated, it can cause pelvic inflammatory disease in women and epididymitis in men both of which can lead to infertility. It can also lead to a disseminated infection in which the gonorrhea bacteria get into the bloodstream and spread throughout the body. Syphilis and gonorrhea had been under control for many years but are now making a comeback. The reason for that is that antibiotics used to treat them do not work as well anymore because the bacteria are becoming resistant. Herpes simplex viruses one and two HSV-1 produces mostly cold sores, and HSV-2 produces most genital herpes. Both strains are common and also very contagious. They can be spread when an infected person is producing and shedding the virus. Herpes simplex can be spread through sexual contact, including kissing and any contact with saliva, such as sharing drinks. After outbreaks, both HSV-1 and HSV-2 persist in the body and become latent and hide from the immune system in the cell bodies of neurons. Some have recurrent outbreaks of their herpes symptoms because the virus becomes active again. HSV is a virus 
not a bacteria. So the herpes viruses establish lifelong infections and the virus cannot be eradicated from the body. Pregnant women with HSV must make sure that there are no outbreaks around the time of birth. If so, a C-section would be necessary to avoid infecting the baby. Whichever partner has the herpes virus must be aware of when he or she is shedding and more likely to spread the infection. Human papillomavirus, HPV, is estimated to be the most common sexually transmitted infection in the United States. In the year 2000, there were approximately 6.2 million HPV infections among Americans, and 74% of those occurred to people between the ages of 15 and 24. Papilloma is a tumor or wart projecting from the skin or mucous membranes. Most HPV infections cause no physical symptoms. However, in some people, subclinical infections will become clinical and may cause benign papillomas or growths, such as warts. Some people have hundreds of warts covering their external genitalia, requiring powerful immune modulating medications and or cosmetic surgery. Cervical cancer is caused by HPV. The HPV-16 and HPV-18 strains cause around 70% of cases. There are 30 to 40 types of HPV, and they are typically transmitted through sexual contact. Studies show a link between HPV infection and penile and anal cancer. Recent studies show that oral cancers are linked to oral HPV exposure. There are HPV vaccines but they prevent only a fraction of the HPV types. We don't know how long the vaccines last, and the vaccines carry the risk of paralysis and death. It has been estimated that if a college woman has at least one different partner per year for four years, the probability that she will leave college with an HPV infection is greater than 85%. Do condoms completely protect from the HPV virus? No because the areas around the genitals at the base of the penis and the outer part of the vagina, including the inner thigh, are not covered, thus exposing those areas to the infected person's skin. Most sexually active men and women will probably acquire genital HPV infection at some point in their lives. Human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, causes the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome AIDS, a condition which causes progressive failure of the immune system. This impacts the body's ability to fight infections and allows life-threatening opportunistic infections and cancers to thrive. Without treatment, the average survival after infection with HIV is estimated at 10 years. Infection can occur by the transfer of blood or semen or vaginal fluid. Many people do not develop symptoms after getting infected with HIV. Others have only a flu-like illness for several days, and these symptoms usually disappear on their own within a few weeks. However, after the initial infection, although one may have no symptoms, the progression of the disease continues for up to 10 years. During this period, the virus continues to multiply actively and infects and kills the cells of the immune system. Our immune system allows us to fight against bacteria, viruses, and other infections. Currently, there is no cure for HIV AIDS. Antiretroviral therapies have brought renewed hope for many people living with HIV. However, they do not offer a cure, and they can cause many side effects. This sexual exposure chart shows how increasing numbers of sex partners that a person has in his or her lifetime increases exponentially his or her exposure and risk of STIs. The assumption is that every person the guy at the top of the chart has had sex with has had the same number of partners that he has had. And the Surgeon General tells us that when you have sex with someone, you are having sex with everyone they've had sex with for the last 10 years, and everyone they and their partners have had sex with for the last 10 years. So up on the top left, if you only have one partner your whole life, and your partner has never had sex before either, then you would have zero chance of getting an STI. Pretty awesome, right? If someone has three sex partners in his or her life, and that person's partner has also had three sex partners, then there is an exposure to seven other persons' STI risk. And what about the person who has had eight partners? 
That's over 250 exposures to STIs. Our culture tells us that multiple sex partners isn't a big deal and doesn't affect us, but this chart tells us otherwise. It's really pretty unbelievable, isn't it? So in case you are getting the idea that there seems to be a common thread running through most of the cultural minefields we're discussing today, you're right. There are so many problems in our society, and a lot of them stem from the misuse of our sexuality.